Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, good morning and welcome to Interpol's General Secretary Headquarters and thank you for being with us today. In this opening of my remarks, I'd like to take a moment to remind ourselves why we are all here. Why Interpol staff uh, and police in China, Malaysia, Vietnam and elsewhere have been working around the clock since last Friday, sharing information and facilitating communication with countries, police across Asia, Europe and beyond. Just this morning, I had the honor of hosting Alessandro Panza, the head of the Italian State Police. Italy has played a vital role in making sure that when a passport is reported lost or stolen in Italy, the data is entered into Interpol's databases for one reason. So the data can be screened before people cross borders and before people enter planes. But most importantly, we need to remind ourselves for whom we are doing this and for whom we will never stop even when the spotlight will have moved away from this case. In this case, simply put, we owe it to the 239 passengers of flight MH370, to their families, to their loved ones, and their friends. To them, I say that our priority will always be to put an end to the excruciating pain of uncertainty. As a matter of fact, this and not terrorism, not stolen passports, not conspiracy theories, was our very first thought. The moment Interpol learned of the disappearance of flight MH370, we immediately offered our assistance in disaster victim identification efforts to the countries involved. That offer still stands and Interpol is ready to honor that commitment the minute the fate of flight MH370 is ascertained. In parallel, we continue to work with our member countries to follow all available leads and examine all options, including terrorism, organized crime, illegal movement of people, whether in a form of human trafficking or smuggling. We have information to share with you that hasn't been publicly made available until now. Could we have the slide? There have been images on the media about the two individuals believed to be the two individuals who were in possession of the stolen Italian passport and the stolen Austrian passport to board flight 370. We have this photograph showing the two individuals who traveled using passports not that were stolen, not that were Italian, and not that were Austrian. This image is showing them using the passport of Iranian nationality. The names are P-O-U-R-I, first name, Puri. Last name listed on the passport is N-O-U-R-M-O-H-A-M-M-A-D-I, Puri Nur Mohammadi. Date of birth, 30 April. 1995, in the media there's been reports of a 19-year-old. Again, what we know is it's the Iranian passport information. His identity is something we're going to ask the media and viewers around the world to help us confirm. The second individual, who I've not read his name in the media, is named Delavar, D-E-L-A-V-A-R. And the last name is Sayad Mohammad Reza, S-E-Y-E-D-M-O-H-A-M-M-A-D-R-E-Z-A. Again, S-E-Y-E-D-M-O-H-A-M-M-A-D-R-E-Z-A. Again, Iranian passport, date of birth on a passport, 21 September 19. 84. Neither of these Iranian passports were reported stolen or were listed in Interpol's databases. Therefore, any airline, any border control agency 
comparing these passport names and numbers against Interpol's databases would not have had a hit. We know that once these two individuals arrived in Kuala Lumpur on the 28th of February, they boarded flight 370 using different identities, a stolen Austrian and a stolen Italian passport. We are in the process of asking our member countries around the world to provide us any additional information concerning the images, concerning the names of the passports, and the passport numbers. We are cooperating with Interpol Malaysia, Interpol China, Interpol Iran, and all of the member countries involved in this investigation. There has been great, great speculation ever since it was revealed that the two passport holders were carrying passports that were reported lost or stolen. Great speculation about whether or not this was a terrorist attack or wasn't a terrorist attack. And suddenly people seem to be concerned for the first time whether it's good or bad to allow people to travel the world using stolen passports. People began to understand how dangerous it is to have people travel the world using stolen passports. But already in the last 24 hours you see the story changing as the belief becomes more certain that these two individuals were probably not terrorists. The interest seems to be dying down because they might just be people who are being smuggled or trafficked. And from Interpol's perspective, the fear, the concern we should all have is that more than a billion times each year, there are people that either cross borders or board planes without having passports screened against Interpol's database. From experience that goes back as far as February 26, 1993, when the first World Trade Center bombing occurred, we know that the terrorist who mastermind that bombing was carrying a stolen Iraqi passport to cross borders. We know that in Europe, we've had an assassination of a prime minister committed by Milorad Ulmak, who had his passport stamped 27 times without having it compared to Interpol's databases. And we know that uh, the so-called White Widow also was in possession of a stolen passport that she was able to cross borders using without having it checked against Interpol's databases. So I close my introductory remarks by saying that the focus of the world right now and of law enforcement of Interpol should be on trying to find the plane and hopefully find survivors, as difficult as that might be to believe that might occur, and to helping to support the investigations on the ground with regard to that, but also thinking about the next case or cases where dangerous people, not innocent people, dangerous people could be crossing borders with evil in their minds and hearts to harm us all.